Hey everyone, welcome back to the Roast West Coast podcast. This is week four of our Coffee Smarter series with Chris O'Brien, founder, proprietor, and all-around bon vivant from Coffee Cycle in Pacific Beach, San Diego. He's here to continue educating me on the ins and outs of coffee. Today we're talking about cupping and why this traditional way of coffee tasting still has value. Be sure to subscribe to the Roast West Coast newsletter with your email at roastwestcoast.com to get show updates, recaps, and a lot more coffee content. I'll provide some more examples of cupping there along with links to Coffee Cycle and plenty more. Before we get into the show, I just want to remind you that you can get 10% off your coffee bean order from the award-winning Steady State Coffee Roasting in Carlsbad Village, California by using the promo code OWL10. That's all capital letters, O-W-L, the number one, the number zero, at SteadyStateRoasting.com. And now, it's time to get coffee smarter, and for another cup of coffee. Chris, welcome back to Roast West Coast. Uh, Thank you for helping us get coffee smarter once again. I hope a million people came by the shop and asked you about blueberries last week. (laughs) Uh, But this week, I want to ask you about cupping. What is cupping and what can we learn from it? I think it leads a little bit into our conversation last week about the flavor wheel. Absolutely. You know, cupping is a fancy name for coffee tasting is really the the long and short of it. You know, last week we... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. So are you saying there's a little bit of pretension in coffee tasting? Uh, you know, it's not so much that I'm saying it. It's sort of that the world has said that there's pretension in coffee tasting. I got you. But, you know, that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We can, we can find positives in the world of pretension that we find ourselves in. Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, last week we talked about being mindful of what we're tasting, you know, sort of paying attention to what's happening um, to our taste buds and, and to what our brain is picking out when we're tasting something. So you're drinking your cup of coffee. It tastes bitter and dark like your soul. And you're like, whoa that sort of tastes like dark chocolate. And and by your soul, I'm specifically talking about your soul, Ryan. Yep, I got it. Not the viewer's souls, just just yours. Anyway, cupping as coffee tasting is actually the way that coffee professionals taste coffee to give their palates the best chance to fully evaluate all the aspects of a cup of coffee. There's a whole ritual around it. You have these little ceramic bowls and you fill them with the grounds and you fresh grind it and you use the bowl to cup the scent that's rising off the the fresh ground coffee into your nose and mouth so that your sensory organs can fully process the scent of the coffee that's coming off of it because scent and taste are very closely related. They all, they both use the same nerve, the olfactory nerve going down from your nose and your and your throat and that scent is really important to helping you pick out flavors later in the process. So that's, that's the first stage of the ritual. Then you add the water to it. And once you add the water to it, chemical reactions start happening in the coffee. Extraction starts happening. Compounds start leaving the dry coffee grounds and entering the water. And we start smelling the coffee as it's steeping there with the water added. It forms a bit of a crust on top. The, uh, the coffee grounds, once they've had the water added, sort of form this, this crust on top of the bowl. And we use a special spoon, which is sort of a glorified soup spoon, um, to break that crust open after it's been sitting there for a few minutes. And that releases the scents that have been underneath the crust, the scents of the liquid coffee, and not just the grounds interacting with the water. So now the coffee is fully brewed and there's enough compounds that have left the dry coffee grounds and entered the liquid coffee that we can now smell that liquid coffee through the broken crust that we've broken with the spoon. Then we remove the grounds that are floating on the top. We use two spoons to do that. We just scoop them off the top. It's kind of kind of like cowboy coffee like that. We never actually filter this with any paper or cloth or metal. We just scoop those floating grounds off the top. And then you use those same spoons to slurp coffee loudly into your mouth. And that has also an effect where it cools the coffee enough for you to be able to taste it. But also by slurping it loudly, a nice... (sighs) That slurping noise, that slurping sound actually helps spread the coffee to the entirety of the inside of your palate. So that all your taste buds can taste it all at once. 
and send the most data back to your brain about what you're tasting. And then this goes on. You keep slurping loudly. The coffee itself cools and you keep tasting it as it cools. The goal of that is to determine all the different flavors that are in it. And as a roaster, decide if you would like to serve that coffee, right? Right. So as a coffee shop owner, rather. Exactly. So people in different stages of coffee production use cupping, coffee cupping for different purposes. So as a shop owner, I use cupping to evaluate a coffee and decide if I want to serve it, if I decide if it's if it's good enough for my shop. And I also use it to help identify specific flavors so that I can describe those coffees to customers. A coffee buyer, someone who goes to Guatemala or Brazil or Ethiopia to buy coffee from a coffee farm or a coffee producer of some sort, they are going to be evaluating the coffee and looking for defects. They're going to be looking for flaws in the agricultural product so that they can determine whether it's worthy for them to buy at all and then sell on to people like me. Interesting. Coffee cupping, because it really is this intense sensory overload of all the different flavors that are in coffee, and we discussed in a previous week that coffee is actually the most complex tasting beverage in the world. Well, that's 800 compounds in a cup of coffee is a lot for your mind to process. So having this ritual way of evaluating coffees can be really helpful for digesting all that information that you're getting when you're drinking that coffee. So yeah, coffee cupping can be used in those different ways, but the ritual behind it actually has this very practical application of allowing your physical abilities to fully digest the sensory implication and information that the coffee is bringing you. Very cool. I know, I think in all of these conversations I've been having with different roasters, the one thing they they all kind of harp on is consistency from week to week, whether it's in the coffee or in the brewing or whatever. And And having that one way, since they're tasting all of their, you know, their different variations kind of the same way over time helps create a process to maintain that consistency that our listeners are getting, you know, at their local shop week to week. Absolutely. Chris, that was great again. Thank you for joining and helping us get a little smarter about coffee today. Appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to our next chat. Oh, I always look forward to it, Ryan. I get to drink coffee and sit with you and tell you how much you don't know. Thanks for listening to the Roast West Coast podcast and for getting coffee smarter with me today. Chris will be back next week and we'll finally have that talk about coffee processing I've been alluding to for weeks. We'll learn about what the differences between washed and natural coffee beans are and I'll present a new business idea for Chris to immediately shoot down. If you're craving some coffee right this second, go to coffee-cycle.com to learn more about Chris's shop and to order some coffee or follow at coffee-cycle on Instagram. You can find links in this show's notes. I'm glad you're joining me for the next few months to meet the coffee roasters of North County, San Diego. Next week, the co-founder and head roaster of Stash Roasting in Oceanside, California, Inbal Kalin, calls in to talk about how coffee has impacted her life. And finally, how the coronavirus set back their new cafe opening plans. Look for that show wherever you're listening to great podcasts, including Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and basically everywhere else. Just search for Roast West Coast. Episodes with great local founders and roasters from Zumbar Coffee and Tea, Steady State Roasting, Lofty Coffee, and Ironsmith Coffee are already out. Listen to them. They're everywhere. As I always say, you're listening to this show, so I know you can find them. And I also know you're excited about coffee. A sincere thank you for listening. And if you have a moment, please review and then share this show with a coffee drinking friend. It really helps our podcast get found by new listeners. This episode of the Roast West Coast podcast has been produced and recorded by me, Ryan Wolt. I can't say it enough, but thanks for listening. Please subscribe to the bonus content at roastwestcoast.com. And as always, be sure to drink good coffee.